Hello everyone, my name is Samantha and I am with Empower Multimedia. We post content regarding business, academia, and entrepreneurship. Remember, if you ever need help starting and growing your business, click the link in the description for a free 15-minute consultation. Today we will be covering how to use Slack. This is similar to Discord, but it is more for a professional setting. And just as a reminder, this video is strictly informational and not advice. Now let's get into it. Slack is a productivity and chat platform for team communication and collaboration. To get started, you'll need to create a team or join an existing one, then invite other users to chat with. Once your chat is set up, you can use channels to communicate publicly and direct messages for private exchanges. While chatting, you can use special formatting, add emojis and reactions, track mentions, share files, and more. Your first step is going to be setting up a team if you aren't joining one. So for this, you're going to open Slack, and you can use Slack on their website at slack.com or download it in the app or desktop or mobile platforms. It may be easiest to perform the setup from the website, then proceed to one of the apps to begin chatting. You're going to want to now enter an email address and then click Create Team. On the website, this field appears in the middle of the page. You will be prompted to enter a team name. You may be prompted to enter six-digit security codes into your email before being able to proceed. On mobile devices, you will be prompted for an email after tapping Create Team. You can also click Find Your Team if you already know a team that you are trying to join. Next, you're going to want to name your group. Enter your team name and click Next. Now you're going to want to enter a name slash username and click Next. You will be prompted to review your team's details before creation. Click Create My Team. You will be taken to the team's chat room. You can select Edit next to any part of your team to go back and change it before confirming. Next, you're going to invite people to your team. Click the Invite People button located in the left sidebar. This will bring a page to enter email addresses and names to which invitations can be sent. On mobile, this button will appear at the top of the main chat screen and can also access your device's contacts for invitations. If you have joined a team and do not have admin role privileges, then this button may not appear. Now you're going to want to create a channel. Click the plus button next to channel in the left sidebar. From here you can set a name, invite users, and choose whether it will be public or private. To access the sidebar on mobile, tap the team name in the upper left corner. Now you're going to send your teammates direct messages. You can do this by clicking the plus icon next to direct messages. Enter a teammate's name and a direct message channel will be created in the left sidebar for private communication between you and that user. Direct messages channels can contain multiple teammates as well. You can also adjust channel notifications. Select Preferences in the upper right corner. From here, you can adjust what actions, such as any message or mentions only, will send you a notification or any platform associated with your account. You can set custom notifications for mentions of specific words. These can be accessed from the Settings menu on mobile, and you can temporarily disable notifications by pressing the bell icon in the upper left, and for mobile, it's in the upper right. If you want to switch between teams, uh, this can happen if you're part of multiple teams with your account, you can switch between them by clicking the team name in the upper left and choosing sign into another team. On mobile, you will see a four square icon in the upper right after tapping the team name instead of sign on to another team. You can also switch between channels. To do this, click any name under the channel header in the left sidebar to change the chat area into that conversation. You can also hit Ctrl K to bring up a channel quick search. Tap the team name in the upper left to open the sidebar on mobile. To send messages in chat, you just type them into the text field and hit enter to send. And you can add emojis to your messages by clicking the smiley button on the right side of the text field or on the left on mobile. Speaking of messaging, you can use special formatting. You can surround parts or all of your text with certain symbols to change your formatting. A full list of formatting interactions can be found on the Slack support site. Here are some examples. By using an asterisk on both sides of the message, it will be bold. By using underscores, it will italicize it. By using squiggle lines, this will strike through the text. And by using a triple backtick on each side to format your text with a code box. You can also modify messages. To do this, click the three dot icon displayed on the right of a message when you hover the cursor over it. This will bring up a menu to edit, delete, mark on red, pin, or set a reminder for that message. Tap and hold a message on mobile to bring up the full list of modifying options. 
Pinning a message will place it at the top of a channel and display it as you scroll. Use this for important announcements. You can select a period from 20 minutes to one week before the reminder takes place. You can also star messages to flag them as important. Click the star icon that appears next to the timestamp while hovering the cursor over the messages. This will add it to a list of saved messages that can be checked later by clicking the star icon in the upper right. On mobile, tap a message to select it, then tap the star that appears on top of the screen. You can check your starred message by tapping the team name and selecting starred from the drop down menu in the upper left. You can also mention a user in chat. To do this, type the app symbol followed by the username of the person you want to mention. They will receive a Slack notification that they have been mentioned in the chat. For example, at user colon Slack message. You can also use mentions to address an entire channel or team by doing at channel or at team. You can check messages in which you've been mentioned by clicking the at icon in the upper right corner. On mobile, this is accessed by tapping the team name and selecting mentions from the drop down menu in the upper left. You can add reactions to messages too. Click the smiley icon when hovering over a message to add an emoji reaction that will display directly below the message. These can be used for something like votes or just for fun. Reactions can also be added to messages from the modify messages menu. On mobile, this is the only way to add them. Reactions can only be in emojis. If you need to upload files to a chat, tap the plus button in the chat field and select upload file from the pop-up menu to browse your device for files. You can also drag and drop files into the chat window on a computer. On mobile, you can take and upload photos from the same chat field menu. Slack will store up to 5 gigabytes of files, including images, on its servers. This amount can be increased by upgrading to the paid services. Here are some additional options. You can set custom reminders. Enter slash remind into a text field followed by a person, at user, or channel, hashtag channel, at action, and time. Slack will set an automatic reminder for the entered information. The standard formatting is Slack remind bracket person bracket bracket what bracket bracket what when bracket. For example, slash remind hashtag general to clock out at 5 o'clock p.m. The when can be a specific time such as 12 p.m. or a general period in five minutes. Reminders will appear as direct messages from Slack bot. You also have the option of creating text code snippets. To do this, click the plus on the left side of the text field and select create a snippet. This will open a window with various options for formatting a code box. Select a programming language from the drop down in the upper left and Slack will match the color formatting for different values. Select share in in the drop down to choose which channel or conversations your snippet is shared. Enter a comment that will be included underneath your code box. Mobile can only use this basic formatting tag to use code boxes. You can also use timestamp archives. Click a timestamp on the left side of a message. You will be taken to the archive page of that message and any other messages sent directly in or in response to it. The archive link is permanent and can be shared. Mobile users can tap a message, then tap the link icon in the upper right. You can also integrate with some other software platforms. If you have admin access to your team, you can go to slack.com slash integrations and choose from a list of app extensions to include in your Slack for direct interaction. Various productivity services like Google Drive, Trello, or Dropbox have well-maintained Slack extensions. You can also integrate third-party bots to serve more specific purposes than the included Slack bot. Here are a couple tips about Slack. Slackbot is a good way to learn the ins and outs of the platform and its different functions. Slackbot can also be used for reminders or auto-messaging, which can help set up in your channel settings. Your status will adjust on its own when you are away from your keyboard for too long, but you can also toggle between active slash away status manually by clicking the dot next to your name or from the settings menu on mobile. This concludes the video. Make sure you check back with Empower Multimedia for all of your business, academia, and entrepreneurship concerns. Remember, if you ever need help with starting or growing your business, Click the link in the description for a free 15-minute consultation. If you have any questions, comments, or video recommendations, please comment below. Also remember to like and subscribe.